This video tutorial is intended to support you when installing the 266 pressure transmitter correctly, in recognizing and rectifying problems during commissioning, and in evaluating malfunctions when the sensor is in operation. Pressure transmitters from the 266 model series are modular, field-mounted, microprocessor-based electronic transmitters with multiple sensor technologies. They provide an accurate and reliable measurement of differential pressure, pressure and absolute pressure, flow and level. But what is pressure and what does absolute pressure mean? Pressure is the ratio of a force that is exerted on a defined area. That is, pressure is defined as the force per unit of area. If the force decreases or is applied to a larger area, the pressure drops. If the effective force increases or is applied to a smaller area, the pressure rises. The International System of Units, with the abbreviation SI, Système International de Unités, is the most widely used system of units for physical dimensions. The units of pressure are also specified in this system of units. Pressure is measured in pascals, where one pascal corresponds to one newton per square meter. For greater pressures, the SI unit bar is used. One bar corresponds to 100,000 pascal. There are various methods of measuring pressure. Absolute pressure refers to the perfect or full vacuum. The zero point of absolute pressure is defined in this absolutely molecule-free space. An example of an absolute value is air pressure. Relative pressure is a relative pressure relationship between two volumes. Ambient pressure is often used as a reference value, although depending on the context, other reference values can be used. One example of a relative pressure frequently specified is the pressure in a tire. If you fill a tire with a relative pressure of 2 bar at an air pressure of 1 bar, the tire has an absolute pressure of 3 bar. But what does this mean for our measurement? Let's take a medium with a certain pressure that is greater than atmospheric pressure. Here we can measure the absolute pressure or the relative pressure compared with the atmospheric pressure. For a second medium with a different pressure, we can also measure the absolute and the relative pressure as well as the differential pressure of the two media. An example of the differential pressure measurement is the level measurement in a closed tank system. As the level increases, the pressure difference rises because of the intrinsic weight of the medium. These values allow you to calculate the correct level of the tank. The 266 pressure transmitter for absolute pressure measurement is designed so that the medium to be measured transfers the pressure to the filling fluid via a separating diaphragm. This activates the pressure sensor, which in turn converts the measured pressure into an electric value. The pressure sensor measures using a reference vacuum and is protected against overload by an overload diaphragm. The 266 pressure transmitter for differential pressure measurement has a similar setup. However, instead of the reference vacuum, a second medium transfers the pressure, also decoupled by a separating diaphragm, to a second filling fluid. The 266 multivariable pressure transmitter has a multi-sensor technology which, in addition to differential pressure measurement, also enables absolute pressure measurement for a medium. Depending on how the 266 pressure transmitter is used, there are certain conditions to be observed for assembly, and these are illustrated in the following examples. To measure the pressure of liquids in the process pipe, the sampling point must be located at the side of the process line. For pure liquids, the pressure transmitter must be mounted at the side of or beneath the sampling point. The pressure transmitter must be mounted such that the cable entry points downward, thus preventing any liquids from penetrating. The connection leads should also be provided with a drip loop if possible. For contaminated liquids, mount the pressure transmitter above the sampling point in order to avoid the capillary tubes and pressure transmitter becoming blocked. It may also be useful to use a diaphragm seal for contaminated liquids. To measure the pressure of condensable vapor in the process pipe, the sampling point must be located at the side of the process pipe. The pressure transmitter must be mounted such that the cable entry points downwards, thus preventing any liquids from penetrating. The connection leads should also be provided with a drip loop, if possible. 
The pressure transmitter is mounted beneath the sampling point and the perpendicular part of the impulse line must be filled with a compatible filling fluid. To measure gases, the sampling point must be located above or at the side of the process line. The pressure transmitter must be mounted such that the cable entry points downward, thus preventing any liquids from penetrating. The connection leads should also be provided with a drip loop, if possible. The pressure transmitter must be attached next to or above the sampling point. To measure the level of liquids in containers, the sampling point must be located as low as possible on the container. The sampling point must be located as low as possible on the container. The transmitter must be mounted at the same height as or below the minimum level to be measured. The pressure transmitter must be mounted such that the cable entry points downward, thus preventing any liquids from penetrating. The connection leads should also be provided with a drip loop, if possible. When calculating the level, the difference in installation height of the pressure transmitter to the sampling point must be taken into account. To measure the level of liquids in closed containers, one sampling point must be located as low as possible on the container. The second must be above the maximum level. The transmitter must be mounted at the same height as or below the minimum level to be measured. The pressure transmitter must be mounted such that the cable entry points downward, thus preventing any liquids from penetrating. The connection leads should also be provided with a drip loop, if possible. The lower sampling point must be connected at connection plus H of the pressure transmitter and the upper sampling point at connection minus L. Depending on the installation, you have to rotate the housing to make the operating panel completely accessible. To do this, undo the hexagon socket screw on the foot of the housing. Rotate the housing into the desired position and tighten the hexagon socket screw again. In addition to the housing, the display can also be rotated in 90 degree stages. To do this, open the cover with the inspection glass and disconnect the display from the electronics module. The connector between the electronics module and the communication board should remain in the communication board. Rotate the LCD display to the desired position and insert the display in the electronics module again. Make sure that the connector for the display is attached again. Make sure that the four plastic fixings are arranged correctly. Note the special regulations for pressure transmitters for potentially explosive atmospheres. Depending on the device equipment delivered, the electrical connection is via a cable entry, via Harding connectors, or via a field bus plug system. The regulations for the electrical connection must be observed, as well as supplementary regulations for devices for potentially explosive atmospheres, or in accordance with ATEC certification. The electricity must only be connected when the power is switched off. Open the pressure transmitter on the field bus side and pull the cable through the cable gland. Undo the compression fittings for plus and minus, place the cable in position, and screw the terminals tight. For flexible cables, you should always use wire end ferrules. Close the housing and switch the power supply on. Check first that the existing operating voltage corresponds to that indicated on the nameplate. The same lines are used for both the power supply and the output signal. A terminal is available on both the outside of the housing and in the plug for earthing, PE, the transmitter. Both connections must be galvanically connected to one another. You have to earth this earthing terminal at a suitable point. For a transmitter measuring loop, an earth should maintain a resistance of 5 ohms or less. Use a cable with a cross section of at least 15 AWG the display starts and after a few seconds the current measured values are displayed. The two pressure connections are labeled with the designations H for high pressure and L for low pressure. Close the pressure lines with the corresponding screw connections so that they are sealed. To enable the 266 series pressure transmitters to be connected on both sides, close the respective opposing sides with blind plugs. Pressure transmitters for absolute measurements have only one connection. Once you have installed the pressure transmitter mechanically and electrically, you can quickly and easily program the desired settings via the display. Using the right hand operating button, call up the menu and select the first entry, Easy Setup. On devices with an optional touchscreen user interface, the function has to be released separately. For the procedure, see the manual. In the first two settings, you can enter the desired language and the measuring point tagging. With the right hand button, you can process the individual menu items. 
use the left hand button to proceed to the next setting. With the two middle buttons, you can select from various parameters within a menu. In the next menu, PV unit, select the measuring unit of the pressure transmitter. In the PV lower range value and PV upper range value menus, set the pressure transmitter measuring range. The initial value set corresponds to an output current of 4 MA and the final value a current of 20 MA. When selecting the final value, note the maximum measuring range of the pressure transmitter. The label on the measuring cell indicates the maximum pressure that the pressure transmitter has been designed for. If the PV final value is greater than the maximum value of the pressure transmitter, an error message is displayed. In the next menu item, you configure whether the measuring range is recorded linearly or to the square root, or to the square root with certain error corrections. For further information, see the operating instructions under Transfer Function. If the output signal of the pressure transmitter is irregular because of the process, it can be electrically smooth or damped. The additional time constant can be set in increments of 0 .0001 seconds to a value between 0 and 60 seconds. The damping has no influence whatsoever on the digitally displayed measured value in the physical unit. It only influences the factors derived from this measured value, such as the analog output current. You can then enter the value that is to be displayed by default in the first line of the display. In the last menu item, you correct the mounting position or the zero point balancing. If the pressure transmitter is installed in a different way, you can correct the mounting position here as otherwise incorrect measurements will occur. To do this, the process has to be regulated to the lowest value. You then confirm the menu item and the pressure transmitter performs an automatic calibration. In addition to the configuration via the display, you can configure and operate the pressure transmitter completely via a computer. To do this, connect the pressure transmitter to the computer via an IFAC modem and start the ABB Asset Vision Basic software. Select Automatic Mode. and then the transmitter. Using the right mouse button, call up the context menu and establish the connection. Then select Parameterize Online. A software prompt asks whether you want to download the current parameters. Confirm this prompt. You can see the progress of the download on the loading bar at the bottom left. After the download, the main screen shows the device data such as the device type and the serial number of the pressure transmitter. On the left hand side, select Parameterization. You can now use the tiles to perform the individual parameterizations. For example, via the process variable tile, you can set the pressure measuring range, the PV initial value, and the PV final value. In addition, the current measured values are displayed at the top. If you have changed a value, confirm this using the Accept button. Via the left-hand navigation, you can call up further functions such as blocking the keyboard on the pressure transmitter or the low and high alarms as well as the related output currents. Via the Display function, you can assign the two lines on the device in accordance with your setting. Via the Display, you can call up the Diagnosis menu via point 0.7 here you can display all current values, such as pressures and the output current. The ABB Asset Vision Basic Program provides you with extended diagnosis options. In the left-hand menu, select the Diagnosis function. The current data and the error messages are read out from the pressure transmitter. If there are no errors, all components light up green. Changes in the configuration are also displayed as messages here. If you want to reset these changes, select the Reset function from the Extras menu. In the display that appears, select the item Configuration Changed using the Reset button. Once all of the settings have been configured, you can safeguard the pressure transmitter with right protection. To do this, remove the nameplate on the device side and use a screwdriver to rotate the switch with the lock icon so that the arrow points to the lock. When rotating the switch, 
Press it in lightly, as otherwise the locking mechanism will prevent the rotation. The right protection is indicated in the display with a lock icon. If you want to reconfigure the device, you have to first remove the right protection. To do this, remove the nameplate on the device side and use a screwdriver to rotate the left hand switch so that the arrow points to the other position. Screw the nameplate on again. Above the process connection of the standard pressure measuring cell is a small filter plug. This is responsible for equalizing the atmospheric pressure. It must not be blocked, glued up, or removed. If this were the case, the pressure equalization would no longer work and the measuring result would be falsified by the incorrect atmospheric pressure. It is extremely important to set the correct zero point on the pressure transmitter. For example, if you have set a measuring range of 0 to 200 MB and the zero point is set to 100 MB, this will result in a 50% incorrect measurement. In the parameterization menu item, under the process variable tile, you can manually set the zero point as an offset variable. Change the value accordingly and confirm with execute. In this menu, you can also reset the zero point to a specific value, to zero or to the value previously used. You must also confirm this function with execute. You can easily check the pressure transmitter current. To do this, disconnect the pressure transmitter from the power supply and remove the rear cover. Remove the bridge at the test position between the external meter plus and minus terminals. To do this, undo both screws and remove the bridge using pliers. You can now connect the measuring device to these terminals and check the current. If the parameterization of the pressure transmitter fails, it may make sense to reset the transmitter to the factory settings. Start the ABB Asset Vision Basic software and via the Extras menu item, call up the Reset function. The left-hand menu contains the function Reset to Factory Settings. After selecting this function, you can reset the calibration of the pressure transmitter and the calibration of the outputs to the factory settings. First. Check whether there's an operating voltage supply to the pressure transmitter. Check the current to the pressure transmitter as described in the measuring current chapter. If the operating voltage is correct, the device must be sent to the factory for repair or the faulty components replaced. The software diagnosis tool can help you here as described in the diagnosis chapter. If no operating voltage is present, check the supply lines. If no current is measured, this may be the result of a faulty terminal block. Disconnect the pressure transmitter from the power supply. Open the rear device cover and remove the connection cable. Using a Phillips screwdriver, unscrew the two lower screws that fasten the terminal block and remove the terminal block. Installation is executed in the reverse sequence. Proceed with caution to avoid bending the connection contacts in the housing. Defects in the pressure transmitter are usually recognized by the self-diagnosis system and indicated in the display. Connect a computer with the ABB Asset Vision Basic software to the pressure transmitter and start the software. In the diagnosis chapter, we showed you how to perform diagnosis. Here, error messages are displayed in plain text. In our example, a memory error was detected. The cause of the error was found to be a faulty electronic memory. Therefore, the electronics and the communication board must be replaced. Disconnect the pressure transmitter from the power supply and open the housing on the display side. Lift the display out carefully at the three points with the flat bladed screwdriver as shown in the image. Use a Phillips screwdriver to undo the two fixing screws of the communication board. Remove the contact strip of the display and carefully lift up the communication board. Beneath the board is the ribbon cable to the measuring cell. Press the connector fuse and disconnect the ribbon cable. 
Now take the new connection board, attach the ribbon cable, and insert the board. The ribbon cable must not be damaged or pinched. Fasten the communication board with the two Phillips screws and reattach the contact strip of the display. Before the pressure transmitter can be recommissioned, you have to perform data balancing between the measuring cell and the communication board. On the communication board, you will see the possible settings for the dip switches. For data balancing after a replacement, switch 1 must be enabled, that is, set to on. As we have replaced the electronics, switch 2 must be set to off. Set the dip switches accordingly and apply the operating voltage for the data balance for at least 60 seconds. Then switch the operating voltage off again and set dip switch 1 to off again. Now attach the display. It will engage audibly. Once you have switched the voltage on again, the pressure transmitter boots and everything should work as normal again. Check the pressure transmitter again with the diagnosis tool. The error message will also no longer appear here. Instead, a note appears informing you that the configuration was imported again as a result of the electronics being replaced. If a correct measurement of the pressure transmitter is no longer possible, the cause may be a blocked filter opening. Remove the process pipe and then check and clean the filter opening of the pressure transmitter.